Hey guys, KRX Sip here with another review. This time I'll be reviewing the AC07, Kamen Rider Greedon, and Dandeliner set from Kamen Rider Gaim. This is the seventh release in the Arms Chain series, and the first of two to include a lock vehicle. So this set includes a few things the figure, one arms, one weapon, and the lock vehicle. So to start, we'll take a look at Kamen Rider Greedon. So starting off the base body, this is the same type as Kamen Rider Baron. And so the undersuit is nearly the same, though cast in a metallic, a metallic brown plastic and with some details missing. So that's the chainmail design for the torso. The fairly simple arms and shoulders. Still has the medieval style gauntlets as well as thigh armor. The difference here is that it's missing the special patterns that were on Counter Baron's armor pieces. So it's got the same details on the back as well, and the same generic San Yoku driver as well. He also have his unique helmet, which has a very rounded shape with this cross-shaped piece in the center to separate the eyes, and a red forehead gem. Articulation-wise, it's standard for the arm chain series. Ball joint head, arms rotate 360 degrees, go in and out, uh, uh, bicep rotation, single joint elbows, wrist swivel, two finger joints, waist swivel, legs go forward and back, in and out, have a thigh swivel, single joint knees, and ball joint ankles. Though at least for mine, the joints are fairly tight in some places. A bit too tight, I think, but not enough for much cause of concern. Next we have the Dungaree Arms, which is done in a lighter shade of brown plastic. This is a kind of a glittery uh, metallic brown. Then for the top part of the acorn, have a nice metallic gold paint. You can see all of these lines very well sculpted in. Got a nice pattern. And it's to the point where the seam lines actually blend in quite well. Especially if viewed at an angle. It's got various panel lines and detail lines on the main body. And in this case, they even went to the point of making the harness piece for attaching it the same color as the rest of it to help complete the look. Instead of having it be a separate color and more stand out. have the Donkachi, which has a base black color with some nice metallic, golden metallic bronze for the hammer piece, which when turned on its side also resembles an acorn. Then finally, you have the lock vehicle, the Dandeliner. Now the lock vehicles were the rider machines in the Gaim series. The first two were the Sakura Hurricane and the Rose Attacker, and they were released separately and released prior to this alongside the releases of Gaim Orange Arms and Baron Banana Arms, as they were initially concept to be exclusive to those two riders, but what eventually happened is that within the series, it turned out that any lock vehicle could be used by any riders because they basically are like lock seeds, except instead of being used to transform into different arms, they can be unlocked and then grow and transform into vehicles. So for the Dan D liner, which is LV03, or Lock Vehicle 03, this is based on a Dandelion. Dandelion. 
And so the base color here is a uh, metallic silver plastic with bits of metallic gold paint. And see here in the center is the dandelion part with a stem going down here. Unfortunately, it's also surrounded by various kind of kibble that is necessary for the transformation to its lock vehicle. You see here, you got the release button, which is just a simple push button. And the hinge here has a unique shape compared to other lock seeds, or to actual lock seeds. Though it's generally a shared hinge shape among the lock vehicles. Inside you got a symbol of a dandelion. And then the back they the back you have the attaching piece. Now this has no electronics of any kind, as indicated here by how you have these three empty spaces. Just so when it is used with the single wood rider, which is one of its features, nothing gets in the way. You also have this cover piece here, and initially I kinda thought this was to this was positive because there were dummied out sounds, but I actually took a look under here and actually just under there is a screw and the hinge for part of its transformation. So like I just said, this can be used with the Sengoku driver. And so to do so, it's the same thing as using a lock seed. You just open it up, attach it on, lock on, and then cut. Now, as you can see, there are no sounds. And the other thing about it is that it's designed not to stay open, but rather it's on a slight spring, or yeah, what seems to be a spring, that causes it to kind of close back in on itself. Come on. So really, even though this is possible, there's really not much of a point to it. So first off, we will do the transformation, or rather the equipping of Grion with the Dongri arms. So it's pretty simple, as usual, attach it to the top of the head and then clip it on. You want to reach in at the top of the acorn, and split open like so, fold these parts in down the hinge and then inward like this to, full, to form the shoulder pads. Take this piece and fold it back. And for the chest plate, fold this down and take this piece, pull it up like this, then fold it in on itself like so. And there you have Conrad Greedon, Dongri Arms. So with this, instead of having a knight design, he has more of a low-ranking medieval, sol medieval soldier design. See the inner eye part within the visor. And you've got the helmet piece, which is also designed after an acorn. Along with this new chest bead here which has this uh, kind of interesting design, which is kind of like a wheel, though it might be designed to look at, like something different, and then it has this silver ring around it. And then, of course, you have the top parts of the acorn, which become the shoulder pads, and, like with just about every arms, these are on hinges and move out of the way so that they don't hinder articulation. They even have these little gaps here so that you can actually lift it up like this, and the shoulder pad will move with it. And just for a closer look, here's what it looks like on the inside. And the pattern is done up in a nice gold plas a nice metallic gold paint, rather. And of course, you also equip him with the Donkati in either hand. So you just open up the hand, place it in. 
and close it down. Though it's a little bit tough because of the very square design of the handle. But he can grip it pretty well. Next thing to do is join the transformation for the lock vehicle. So to transfer the dandy liner, first thing you want to do is open this up. And while this doesn't unlock anything, this is necessary for part of the transformation. Then take the front piece and fold it all the way back like this. Take this piece down here, unfold it to here and set it in place. Then pull out this part at the end. And then take this piece and fold it forward just like this. Then take these two parts and open up and then you have the dandy liner in its vehicle mode. Now for the Sakura Hurricane and Rose Attacker, their vehicle modes were standard motorcycles, but for the Dandeliner, it's more like a, a futuristic kind of hover bike. Though this also kind of reveals the general flaw of most of the locked vehicles, which is that because they're designed that they transform by unfolding like this, it means they're usually very thin. And while it looks fine from the front, looking at rather from the side, looking at it from the front is just really odd because it's just so thin and you can see this part on the back and you just don't see much when looking at it from the front. So the kind of thing that is really meant to be looked at from the side. Which is unfortunate that it's got a design where you know it only looks good from certain angles. You also notice that this thing has no wheels, as, like I said, it's designed to be a kind of hover bike. Though it is a pretty strange design. Not one you would expect to come out of a Kamen Rider series. Now, as you can see, there are two handlebars here. So it can take Green or any of the arm change figures and have him ride it. is want to get them into a basic riding stance. I'll fold the arms forward. Open the hands. Have them grip one handlebar with each hand. And because of how they're aligned, he can grip him pretty well. Now there are these kind of footrests here and here, but I wouldn't recommend trying to use them just because, as you can see, his knees kind of bump into these parts, especially this knee which bumps into the main hinge. So a better idea would be just to have his legs kind of gripping the back part here. About like so. There you have Grian riding the Dandeliner. It is an interesting look, but it also at the same time looks a bit awkward because you have the handlebars here and the seat here and then you've got all this space here. And the other thing is that, you know, the only real way to play with this is just kind of pick it up and kind of move it around. And, you know, I'm sure that kids would probably get a kick out of it, but admittedly, it would be nice if it had some kind of wheel so that you could actually roll it along. As it doesn't quite have the same effect if you're just dragging it. And then when you're done, you take green on off, and just set this back down. Although the interesting
interesting thing is that to memory, I don't think that at any point Conrad Green ever actually used a dandeliner. It was simply used by Conrad Geim or the uh, Kurokage Troopers that came in later in the series. So, uh, what I kind of think happened here is that, you know, what, this is kind of a guess, I'm not sure why uh, this was released alongside Greedon when the first two lock vehicles were individual releases, but if I had to guess, I'd probably say uh, the first two didn't sell well on its own, and so they basically included them with, you know, two more releases, or rather include, include the last two with arms change for your releases just so you know you'd kind of be forced into getting the lock vehicle if you want the fear for that rider and I'll be honest while Greedon himself is a definitely great figure and a good addition to the arms change line as his details do completely match up to the show he's you know well sculpted and well painted he's got good articulation and of course you can use the Dungri arms with your other arms change figures the Dandeliner, on the other hand, is kind of the low point of the set. Honestly, the design isn't all that good. The transformation is simple and in the vehicle mood. It's just, you know, a strange design that, like I said, only looks good from certain angles. And there's really not much of a point in using it with your Sengoku driver because it makes absolutely no sounds and it doesn't even open all the way or, you know, isn't really designed to actually open because it's designed to close in on itself, so it just seems kind of pointless. So, as far as this set goes, I would say if you want the arms change figure for Greedon, I definitely, of course, recommend the set because it's technically the only way to get it unless you can uh, find somebody who's selling the figure on its own. But if you do, I'd definitely say to try to get this you know, for a fairly you know low price just because. Obviously, the lock vehicle is going to bump up the price, but it really just isn't that much worth it for the lock vehicle. And you see, there's also the uh, SHP Arts version of Conrad Green on Dungri Arms. So, if you're interested in one with more details and that one that doesn't come with the lock vehicle, then there's that. But, of course, I definitely do recommend this to collectors of Arms Change Figures. Just as long as you don't pay too much for this. So, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and check my channel more, for more videos, as well as my Facebook page. And for now, this is KROX50, riding off.